Hello everyone. How are we doing? They can't hear you. Joe's trying to talk to me. They, you can't hear Joe. Not yet anyway. Well. Oh, oh, ooh. Oh, this is... There we go. We're here. <clears throat> Moth, how are you? Uh, welcome in. It's, this is your game time. Once again, let's just push that intense music down a little bit. How is everyone on this fine Saturday? Uh, Safira as well, thank you for the uh, tier one for four months. Let's go. Let's go, Safira. You delayed your entire day just to see this. Well, you do know who's on today, right? And it does pain me to even introduce this person on this program, uh, for those of you aware. One mortal enemy on the platform. Uh, Professional Joseph. Uh, so without further ado... Professional Joseph, there he is. Hey. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Rebels here. It's me. It's Luna's me. here. I love you. We love you too, Luna. How is everyone? And uh, more importantly, how are you, Mr. Pro Joe? Welcome to This Is Your Game. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Yes, not that you've been badgering me in the DMs since I started the show. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> every, every week, when am I going to be on? When am I going to be on? And then... I did finally book you on, and then I said to you, Joe, you're not going to believe this, right? I have to cancel your show. But yeah. we didn't cancel, we made it work, and that's why we're live today on a Saturday, instead of the usual Sunday 3pm slot. I love it. Making things work. Making things work is the motto of this show, and the motto of this <laughs> whole stream, I guess, because nothing ever works, but we make it work. Uh, and today was the first day we've had tech issues on this show for a while. Although we did have that glitch with the quote episode, so yeah, we, we went a week without tech issues. Anyway, enough about this, let's talk about you. Joe, who are you? <laughs> do, do I really have to introduce myself? Alright, I'm Joe, right? <laughs> I'm, uh, I've been on Twitch for like almost a year now. Um, I've met... I've met Snake very early on, and he's become a, a very good friend. So what, what do you do on Twitch, sir? Yeah, what do you do? Oh, I first started, it was actually very funny. I first started streaming because I was getting really big into the Souls games, uh, especially Bloodborne. And I was getting so comfortable with those games, I was like, well, maybe. Maybe I should, you know, like, stream this or something, or make videos, you know, I'm clearly not shit at the game, I'm decent, maybe people will watch it. So I started streaming Bloodborne, like only Bloodborne, every day was playing Bloodborne. Um, I started speedrunning it, obviously that didn't really last for a long time. Then I started, started to do other things. Um, but it started with Bloodborne, really, it's really fun to look back on it. Because now you're playing like all different things. I play like a different game every day. It, it used to be just Bloodborne every day. <laughs> uh, and before we go further ahead as well, I will say, folks, in in the past, you know, it's not a PG show, it's not an 18 show, you know. Uh, but I will say for those with small children or sensitive ears, uh, Joe's main personality trait is that he swears. Uh, <laughs> So there will be one or two squares, probably several, throughout the course of today's show. I will try and limit it a little bit. Oh, you're just going to rein it in a bit today? Yeah, I'll try. Uh, so yeah, we both met through another streamer who was playing Bloodborne, and then I was like, oh. Yeah. It was back in the day where, like, you know, anyone who sp spoke to you 
in a Twitch chat, I would just follow back instantly because it's like, oh my yeah, god, you've Steve. acknowledged me. You've acknowledged me. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh, you stream as well. <laughs> yes, let me hit you up with that follow. Uh, and then uh, I just started sitting and watching you speedrun Bloodborne every day. <laughs> every day. It was. It was really. It was really every day for like a week or or three or a small month right yeah and then i started to do different stuff then i started to do other dark souls games it took a while before i fully fully start to do like non soul stuff so first it was dark souls 1 then dark souls 3 and then i think after that was the big Devil May Cry playthrough, which Snake set me up for as well. A big revelation. <laughs> yeah, because I was playing Devil May Cry 1 as like a, a filler game between whatever I was playing at that time. And just before the PlayStation uh, 5 came out, and I was like, oh, I'll play Devil May Cry 1. It's one of my favorite games. And you were watching it, and you were just like, what is this? And yeah. I was like, hang on, actually, I think you quite like it. And... Lo and behold, uh, three months later, you've played them all. And he, and he does, in fact, folks, quite like it. And it's a very... Uh, Devil May Cry has... Devil May Cry 5, especially, has become one of my favourite games. Well, we've talked enough about what you're doing currently on Twitch and why you came here and stuff. Uh, so let's talk now about the game you brought along, which is... Uh, Ratchet and Clank, Clank. On the original Hell PS2. Yeah. Yes. I believe you are probably the youngest guest because everyone else has like been like nineties or PS One games yeah, or whatnot, yeah. and you're you're like oh my earliest memory was of a two thousand and three video game or two thousand and four yeah. even. <laughs> uh. I mean, there is games dating before that. Like obviously, I played. I had like all the Game Boys. I mean, not all of them. I mean, I started my first Game Boy was before the Game Boy Color. And then the only game you could play on it was Tetris, right? Yeah. That was my first like Game Boy. And then Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game So I had like pretty much a, a wide variety of Game Boys. But the first console was PlayStation 2, which I saved up with my own money. Finally was able to buy it. And then it was back in the day where you could buy a console and it came with like two controllers, one for you and one for a friend. And then it came with like three games as well. And, and, and I do remember, you remember going to the store, and and because I still remember going to the store and buying my first. Console. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> and like handing yeah, over. Yeah, I think I was about I don't know twelve, something like that, thirteen. Going to the cashier uh, and can I have a PlayStation Two? Please? And just point at the thing like that one. <laughs> uh, so what was it about Ratchet and Clank that kind of? drew you in there i guess well it was like it was the, the game that was bundled with it i remember fondly it was bundled with ratchet and clank i think the first and the second one so i remember buying some separate as well but it definitely came bundled with with them and uh i mean i was at that age that it didn't really matter so long as you could like move the character right yeah and you could shoot shit <laughs> it was fun <laughs> so it might it might have just been like a coincidence that i bought that playstation that came bundled with ratchet and clank but i really came to like enjoy all the games and then when i later got the ps vita i think i, I played them all again on there because it came with like a collection all the ratchet and clank games but it's been a while. It's been a while since I've uh, since I've seen the original one. I've been playing the new ones as well. The new ones are really fun as well. Like I'm discovering my love for the games all over again. So is there a Ratchet and Clank series playthrough, perhaps? In the maybe, works? maybe. In the <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Well, we spoke a little bit about the game. We spoke a little bit about you. Should we actually play the game? Yes. Let's jump in. So here we are, and let's. Let me sit down. Boot this. Oh, we get the. Is it gonna get the beautiful PlayStation 2 menu? Oh. Bringing back memories already, Joe. Oh, yes. 
Oh, and I, you know, the, the memory for from for me, right, for for seeing the PlayStation Two logo yeah. is like putting the disc in and hoping the game starts and that it doesn't crash or something, right? <laughs> I have a lot of memories like that on the uh, Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> and to put the cart in, hoping it boots. If it doesn't, taking the cart out, blowing in it, and then putting it back in. Yeah. Because of the, the real base. <laughs> uh, Although the, con the, the cartridge said you couldn't do it because you, you could damage it. Everyone yeah. did it anyway. Uh, so let's boot this game up then and take it ourselves back to 2003. Oh, and yes. I drink that for the first time. Again, chat, if there's any issues with audio levels, please let us know, we'll get that fixed. Uh, having played the recent PlayStation 5 Ratchet & Clank, uh, the graphics are quite uh, Thank you for using <laughs> primitive. <laughs> <technology>. <laughs> That's a very good way of putting it. Uh, it's just so interesting to see how far we've advanced in such a short time oh, as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you play I mean, this back as well, in the day when I played this, I thought this looked very good. I thought this looked ace. Same. Uh, well, I didn't. I never played this, but I played the original Jack and Dancer, which I really loved. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember that being, like, really stunning graphically, and I played it a few years ago, and I was like, this is not stunning yeah, graphically. Yeah. Because again, like the very early gaming experiences was like point and click adventures and stuff. So, and then Game Boy was usually also like 2D, yeah. platforming 2D stuff. So, like getting a PlayStation 2, booting this up and being like in an open 3D world was just so amazing at the time. What really blew me away, because. Well, first of all, my mind was blown when I had the original PlayStation, and suddenly you went from 2D to 3D. But it was still quite primitive. Oh, yeah. But with PlayStation 2, what really blew my mind, and it's such a really odd thing, is the fact characters now have individual fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and PS1, not just like a, everyone just a had like a, everyone had like a block on PS1. Yeah. And there'd be some black lines to kind of distinguish fingers. <laughs> fingers on PS2, yeah. you finally had characters with fingers on I don't know why that just really, uh... They were not great yet, but no. you could really see fingers. <laughs> yeah. I like the music. Welcome to the Gadgetron help desk. We are here to offer you advice... No, I can't hear it, because I have the stream products. turned down a little bit. Oh, I can... I can... See, this is how... This is why I'm not used to streaming on Sunday. You'll be able to watch it through Discord. It... Oh... Uh... Oh, if the game likes it, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't because the game hates it. Oh, yeah, okay. There we go. Okay, well, Joe, you're going to have to watch for a stream. I'm sorry. Then it's all good. <laughs> the issues of emulators. Sorry, folks. Not always perfect. But always hard, though. <laughs> Hashtag always hard is the motto of the channel. It's really weird because I haven't played the recent one, like, it's just the same controls. It is really, right? You can, I think that, like, the, the wrench throw is even in this, still, was yeah. in the very first game. Yeah, you can throw the wrench. Oh, I just love the look of this already. <laughs> it's yeah. been a while since I've seen it. It's, like, really primitive, but it's got such a... Kind of distinct art style. Yeah. It's always been a hard one because it, it's not really a cartoony style. It's not really cartoon. It yeah. falls in the same department of like Crash Bandicoot a little bit. Yeah, this one does. I feel like the new ones definitely go for more of a cartoony yeah. CGI aesthetic, but with this, this feels still quite real. Yeah, it does, doesn't it, Rebel? It looks really, uh... And then, yeah, again, at the time, just... 
being yeah. able to collect all these things and just being able to explore the world freely. I mean, it's not really an open world yet, but like at the time, as a, as a kid, you know, you don't really think that far. Just yeah, like, oh, just... I have all these options, I can do all these things. I wasted so many hours on these games. And even like the same birds in the sky like that, just yeah. flying about, it's like really, yeah. Uh... That's what these games are always great for, like environmental design. Yeah. Making it making it fun to just like go through a level, making it visually pleasing as well. That's what I really admired about Insomniac's previous work with Sparrow the Dragon. Is, is how oh yeah. Visually distinctive each level would be. Uh, and they've definitely carried that on with this as well. And art style wise as well, with particularly with the PlayStation one Spyros, they do kind of have that similar kind of, uh, it's not cartoony, but it's somewhat realistic, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to place it really, but I've always liked these kinds of, these kinds of art style. Yeah, it's looking really good, isn't it? You wouldn't think this game was like, you know, however old it is now. It's 2002, right? Or 3? Yeah, 2003. Oh, Rosalina, enjoy your water. Yes. And then I also remember in every game, right, there was this super secret mega weapon that just annihilates everything called the Rhino, right? Oh, I remember the Rhino from the newer ones, yeah. Yeah, so this was a weapon that was in every game, but like in the early games, it was always like so hard to acquire. I could never do it as a kid. It's the because... one thing. Hello, Divi, welcome in. Hello, Divi. <laughs> uh, there she is. Ing has gone off. The signal that Divi has arrived. <laughs> Divers, Divers, Divers. I think it's Dibbers. Uh, yeah, well, this is, uh, we're doing a Saturday special, this is your game. Oh, I've got a cutscene. Lane, hello, welcome in. Oh, your first time seeing the show. This is, uh, this is your game. It's a weekly podcast we do. Uh, and today we have Pro Joe below me in the team. Hello. Uh, he's brought along, uh, this is, uh, Ratchet and Clank. Yes. Very nice Interesting. You're quite handy with your wrench. You bet. Um, so yeah, the rhino. It was unobtainable. <laughs> Forever for me. Because you had to jump through so many loops like always. Well, he's on the Ninja's here as well. Hello, Ninja. Welcome on in. Hello, Ninja. Payment. Hogger. Payment, welcome on in. Hello, Payment. Hello, citizens of. Yeah, so I remember the original story. Ratchet is a Lombax, right? And he's almost one of the only ones of his kind. Like their species is almost extinct, but it's never really explained why. And then Clank, which I always thought was really cool was like a, a, a factory malfunction so he he was supposed to be like this killer robot for like the army that nefarious was building the big bad guy for the game but there was a malfunction and he turned out to be like this little friendly robot drift into the sun where it will explode into a flaming ball of gas but of course and then i think there was a ps3 oh sorry yeah the voice acting is so good and if you don't like it, you can take your whiny The voice acting in these games has always been decent. Not stiff at all. Like... We're still on? Well, turn it off, you idiot! The people on those planets are hosed. Well, good luck getting Captain Quark to help you. Actually, you could help me. If you could use your ship to take me to the coordinates contained in this infobot, I might be able to gather further information there. Even if I wanted to, I can't. I'm missing a crucial component of the ship. 
the robotic ignition. I remember system. that guy from the the reboot that? as well. Aye, since sir, I, I've played it now. The in yeah, Drek. Was it called? The Drek. Yeah, yeah. So I agree to take you to this wherever it is, and you get my ship started for me. That is what I'm proposing. Deal. I just realized they've uh, changed Ratchet's voice now. Uh, in personality as well, he, he's a bit of a like, so far, he's this like a, a Yo, dude. Take care of I'm yeah. a dude. <laughs> he's less like that now. Oh, this is great. <laughs> so that's where I've been stuck this whole time. Please return your appendages to the It's funny because sir. when you play this as like right. a, a wee lad, you don't oh, recognize the these jokes. And yeah. when you look at it Thanks, now, it's Ratchet. like, hmm, there was definitely the like, an underlining so that it would My also be kind of interesting nine, for the parents to I'll watch or something i don't know for sure. hang on i know spongebob's quite famous though isn't it like so yeah saying, like, it would be yeah. most beneficial if your citizens they try at least <laughs> i can't watch it anymore but <laughs> i will not stand for this unfortunately you have no choice in the matter Let's just see what Captain Quark has to say about that, my good man. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny. Captain Quark could dispatch you without even breaking a sweat, you, you puny. You have now officially worn out your welcome and my patience. This is your last chance. Stop this madness now! Okay, wait. You're right. I will withdraw my troops. Really? No! He's all yours, gentlemen. Try not to leave any marks. It's weird because even the cutscenes, having played the 2016 one, they're so much more fleshed out in here. Whereas yeah, on this, it's yeah. like, they're quite limited, oh, you know? Sorry about that. You can really see, like, the idea they had, but they were really limited with the technology they had at the time, I guess. Yeah. It's so always like the, the level of detail that went into these games, even back then. Now, remember this from the remake. No, oh, yeah. And then the fact that Clank becomes like your your hover device, right? He can like he can make these little propellers. Yeah. And then he comes a jetpack later, and he becomes uh, like a, a scuba diving machine when you go underwater. Like he transforms into all these things, and it's just that's what I mean with like the, the level of detail, even in these type of games. And I, oh. Yeah, it's just the animations as well are really fun. I don't think it's so much in this game, but what I quite liked about some of the later Ratchet and Clank games with that you play was how wacky the weapons would be as well. Yeah. Like they start to get really silly. I mean, there's a, a weapon in the new game which like turns people like into 8-bit enemies and stuff and like the music changes, which I think is great. Lulu, hello. Hello. Yeah, the previous one had that as well, called the, the Pixelator or something. It's basically like a shotgun, but if you shoot the enemy, they, they transform into like these pixel 2D... Yeah. ...things. <laughs> I definitely remember this from the remake. Yeah, I think it was much bigger though, wasn't it? It's like this tiny cave here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell, Payman, that these games definitely made a uh, significant use of the hardware. Sure. The Dude Buddy Collector Fun. Is, is this pan uh, I've never played Banjo Kazooie. Oh, no, me neither. I remember playing uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day, though, at a friend's, and felt very uh -huh. naughty about the fact that we're playing this very naughty video game. It was a very naughty game, wasn't it? 
All right. So there was a secret here in the remake, which took me like a full hour of going through this cave just to find it. Where was the yeah. secret in the remake? So, the, in here it's different. In the remake, it was like one big pool of water, okay. and then there was this rock that you had to blow up. But the game doesn't tell you, and it doesn't hint you towards it either. It's just like, all right, here is this wall that you can blow up, but the game didn't establish yet that you can do this. So it's like, okay. It was like on the left there. I don't think it's here now. Thanks for free as a dubstep gun. Uh, I remember playing. I think a platinum Saints Row Three. One of the few games I've actually really enjoyed. Uh, yes, intro was fun. I quite like Saints Row Two as well. Uh, I haven't played any of the new ones. Saints Row Four is not that great. That's nanotech. Whenever you sustain injury, let Gadgetron's patented nanotech system rebuild your body oh, we're back inside here. out. Oh, I love how. Quoty, hello. Hello, Quoty. Um, I got some great bargains for you today. I love how, like, true they kept it. The, the remake, the remake yeah. and the original, yeah. I mean, it's just this first part, but can really like recognize it. I'm just again, I'm really quite blown away by like animation and how fluid, mm -hmm. like even the jumps. Uh, probably we're playing this on the emulator. Uh, for legal reasons, I'm playing this on original hardware. For you, <laughs> I'm playing uh, this on an emulator. Uh, uh, and I would be more than happy to tell you what emulator? I mean, for legal reasons, I cannot tell you what emulator, but I would be, <laughs> I would, I would be more than happy. Um, Discord uh, DMs, right? <laughs> yeah. No, for legal reasons, I will not speak of this. Oh yes, no, 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 no. <laughs> we are definitely playing this on uh, the, the original PlayStation Two, yeah. with like a very janky capture card, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going from <laughs> what was it called again? Scart to HDMI. Yeah. Joe has sent me his PlayStation 2 and his copy all the way from Belgium. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll will sort you out, Corey. No worries at all. As a former retro streamer. Uh, so the funny thing is, I, I, as much as I've played all these games, I've played them all. Like all the wretched things, like, except like there was a couple of reboots. I remember this one weird game called Rich Thing Clank Gladiators or something. I never got that. I've, I've gotten all the like the main games. And as much time as I've like wasted on these, I, I have no recollection of actually finishing one of these games as a kid. <laughs> Which is funny because of now I've played the remake, right? In the PlayStation 4. Yeah. Which is basically a remake of the first game. Yeah. And I've I've finished it in like three days now. <laughs> so I was like, wow, I remember these games being like much longer. Well, or maybe, maybe I was just very shit back then. Maybe it is that time then for the uh Projo series playthrough. <laughs> maybe, maybe. What did you just say? I said, look, the plumber's back. All right, why? Someone was told uh, you a white cardboard sign near the road at the border front. Newsflash, giant robots. Okay. Is that, that real, Blue? The escape transports are taking all the rich folks off this god darn planet. So why aren't you on one? Socioeconomic disparity. What? He has to go. It doesn't cycle to fall and cause a domino effect. Jesus Christ. Amen. Get anything interested as well. Well, myself and Quoty uh, played their tentacle uh, on this is your game two weeks ago in the, the VOD collection. Let's buy the info bot. Geronimo! Did he just slide down a sewer pipe? 
Mayday, Mayday! This is the solar ship Radical. We seem to be under attack from the planet's surface. Relax, kid. It looks like some sort of... I love all the way. names in this Probably game in as well. Honor. Yeah. Like Infobot, and then there's a gun called Sheepinator, which just transforms like the robots into the sheep. It's great. Yeah, it's I love the creativity of these games, like I said, with the weapons and how wacky and wild them get. Yeah. Did you see that guy on the left? That was Skid so I think for every game they've Captain made some new like weapons. Obviously, there's like always, always going to be a normal blaster type like weapon and a shotgun type weapon and a so rocket launcher. Out. You know, you're always gonna have those types of weapons, but I think every game they tried at least to implement a couple of new things, which I already really enjoyed. Yeah, Quotium, I, I will say, like, when Ratchet and Clank first came out, I never got around to it. I'm, I'm a later. What I do remember though is uh, my cousins, my Welsh cousins, they were massively into this uh, game. Uh, so I kind of saw it being played second hand but i never actually got around to it myself i think because i'd been around and had the mega drive and had the playstation at this point and i was like 14 15 like kind of the character platformers i think i was kind of a little bit burnt out on maybe oh yeah uh but certainly now as an adult i, I can really enjoy it I got some great oh, cards. same quote. I, I lament the state of video games often daily. <laughs> like one other thing that I think really draw draw me into this was like back at the time you had you had a game for like one specific thing, right? If you wanted a game for like racing with a car, you get like a racing game. If you want a game for like spaceship flying, you get a game for that. If you want a platformer, you get a game for that. And I, I felt at, at the time like this combined all of that really well because you have some levels where you're flying in your spaceship, right? From like planet to planet, which I always do. felt really cool. Like you had so much control over it. Like as a, again, like through the eyes of a little kid, right? You're really feeling right. I'm flying through fucking space right now. It was very cool. I remember. And then you have the hoverboard races as well, which just you know all these fun little mini games and like other stuff to do it was not just platforming it was not just running around shooting things there were so many other things as well yeah i certainly remember playing uh oh, knights of the old republic that's what i was going to say and just being blown away not only by how good that game was but uh in knights of the old republic uh you get sections where you're being the turret of like your starship it just again as like a 13 14 year old the fact yeah now not only could i be a jedi uh, but i could have the experience of flying while like, being a, a gunner in, in a starship yeah yeah it's amazing Morning, i remember chicken. my hello welcome in. hello hello um, yeah, I remember the very, the very first time I played like an actual game on a console was like obviously not, uh, not my own. It was like at a friend's, and it was, it was the weird reboot, like the knockoff version. I mean, not knockoff, but you have the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy, and then like the games that came after that, like Doctor Neo. Uh, yeah, the Nitro, uh... Cortex, I don't even know what they're called. But it came after the original trilogy. Um, and I remember like really liking Crash for it. But that had the same problem. It was just platforming. It was only just you, you had these one or two levels where it's like running on like a bit or you had like an underwater level, but it was mainly just platforming. And then there was this game that came out called Crash Nitro Racing, which is Mario Kart, but with the person, like the characters of Crash, right? Yeah. I can't remember half these games. Uh, I remember... Again, I think it's because during that period, like, certainly, like, Devil May Cry was a pretty really big game. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, but going back to what you were saying about going around a friend's house and playing games, that always uh, reminds me of an Ocarina of Time for the first time. Uh, myself and my friends growing up, we uh, pulled together money to buy Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. Oh, nice. And each week, weekend we take it in turns, like one weekend it'd be at my place, the other weekend it'd be at his, which is just across the road. And it took us a year to beat Ocarina of Time, but it's such a... Yeah, great memory, that. Uh, it's weird, because I think like gaming certainly nowadays, especially with the pandemic as well, obviously you can't see friends, but... Uh, I do kind of miss that childhood feeling of like playing a game with your mates. Yeah, yeah. There's also so fun. Because now I feel like they're either like very deeply single player games that kind of quite boring to watch if you're not a player, you know, because yeah. they're quite hand holding. So there's never like a section like an Ocarina of Time where you get stuck trying to figure out what exactly you have to do in this dungeon. Yeah. Uh, or it's like an online multiplayer game in which, you know, you don't need someone sat by you because you're playing online. Hmm. They don't just really make, like, good co-op games anymore. Because, you know, like... The people that make the console, right? Sony, Microsoft, they yeah. want everyone to buy their own console. They don't want people to go over friends and play it there. Yeah. I do often wonder whether that's a for it as well or just that they think people don't want experiences like that anymore i mean i guess so you just, like every game that came out at least that's what like my memory of it like every game that came out had like at least some sort of co-op function mm. and like at least with the games back in the day, like obviously when you buy like a Need for Speed, like the traditional racing game, you, you don't even look at the back to check if it, you can play this with like your, your mate. Because like obviously it's a racing game. Of course you can play it with a friend. And now if there's yeah, new, I can't remember. new Need for Speed comes out, you can't play it co-op. Only multiplayer online, but not co-op. I can't remember the last time I saw with like an in-person co-op option. Yeah. Yeah, it takes two. Uh, I've seen that being played. Oh yeah, the fun. prison breakout. Get oh no, that's the other thing. Uh, but then again, can you play that co-op in person or does that have to be played online again? Because I feel like there is these like... Uh... It does amuse me, they make co-op games, but it's like... Oh, look. Only online tower. Torturers, assassins. I, I'll tell you anything. Here, take. Oh, that was hard to kill the tree. Right. <laughs> Sir, we're not assassins. Hold on. Let's see what he's got. Yeah, see, Moth knows the struggle. Having trouble finding yeah. games for the the top thing. Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> Hi, I'm Captain Quark, and believe me, there's nothing worse than staring down a Blargy and Snaggle Beast from the inside and knowing your equipment isn't functioning properly. That's oh, why now I that I see Al's Captain Quark, I remember as well. There was this bit Al has been the where you could play his video game on the game, which blew my mind back then. It's like, it's a game it's inside a game, no way. You said it, pal. So if you're fighting crime, or just fighting grime, <laughs> come to Al's RoboShack in Metropolis for all your robotic repairs. Al's RoboShack, it's quarktastic. I love that. I love that kind of Do you know what this means? parody commercial. Yeah. Captain Quark yeah. really sold out. No, it Quote means Captain Quark in the game. Metropolis. We could tell him about this invasion. Big yeah, Al's RoboShack. Uh, what? Uh, a ship? What? You're That's not what it was still called. Me? Well, as planetary chairman, I could arrange for you to borrow our courier ship. Cool. You can count on us, sir. Right. Thank you, your chairman shipliness. Now that you have coordinates to two new planets, you can use your ship. Press the Although, to bring I like Clank's older look. 
Because I've only I've always known him as like the little white robot, and now in the remake they made him like fully chrome. Yeah. Obviously that's what they were trying to go for here, I suppose, like silver type and not just like white paint. That's always how I remembered Clank, like the little white robot. And now he's not white anymore. It's like you you changed Clank. <laughs> this is not how I remember him. This feels like a game that would have had lots of action figures if it came out in the 90s. I'm not sure if by this point uh, there were still action figures. I just Probably remember. I don't remember any action figures for this. Yeah, I just remember like in the 90s, uh, there were so many action figures for everything. Like even like Resident Evil 2 had a line of action figures which was oh, yeah. clearly marketed towards children. Like, it had, like, really bright, colourful boxes and stuff. Yeah, the game itself was, like, you know, an 18-rated, explicit, violent video game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I seem to remember Robocop, another sort of late 80s, early 90s violent films, having just, like, really big action figure lines. Um, I don't think games back in the day did that heavily. I can't really remember. Like, obviously, Nintendo, Pokemon. Yeah, the Pokemon cards was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, other than that, I don't really See, Blue think... Lou, uh, rem remembers. Uh, Robocop was so oh, admired by kids, they made a spin-off cartoon. I mm. can't remember the cartoon, but I remember having the, uh, the Robocop car and, and Robocop and stuff. Power Rangers was a super big thing for me as well. The Mighty Morphin no. Power Rangers. I'm coming to this planet just because uh, we're already like almost an error in. Uh, but I want to. I know this planet from the, the remake. I uh, really yeah? want to uh, yeah? swing by and check it out. Because in the remake, I just rem remember this planet just being absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. And, uh, and even now, I mean, you know, when you look at the backdrop, right? You know, it's all 2D, like cardboard, cardboard cutouts, basically, right? But even then, there is today. a lot of detail that went into it, right? It's not just like a cutout and like paint it in a little bit, and there we go. Oh, the py yes, get that, get the pyro, oh, we got get the, the flamethrower. Oh, flamethrower is OP. Welcome to the Captain Quirk Fitness Course. If you're strong enough, fast enough, and clever enough to beat my fitness challenge, you will receive Hello. a reward Welcome from in. my head trainer. Simply make Welcome your way in. to the third island. To Got that BFG. Good luck. It's a different game, <laughs> Rip. <laughs> but there is the Rhino, as we've established in this Yeah, thing. that's basically the same thing. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know, because I've, I've, I've never been able to obtain it. Yes. In the classic games, for sure, like, guys, again, weird. There was you had to do everything on every single planet and like collect all the collectibles. Basically, like hundred percent the game, right? And back in the day, there was no YouTube, there was no internet. If you couldn't figure it out, bad luck, mate. <laughs> I had the uh, PlayStation magazines. That's why I had the magazines and get little books with the magazines. I think you got that in Belgium. Oh yeah. Uh, the demo discs as well. I love the demo discs. Yeah. That's something else. They just they don't do it anymore. Like demos for games. I mean, it still exists, but like back it in the day. It exists as like it a like YouTube really video big. now. And it's called a teaser walkthrough. Yeah. This is back in the day. Developers really had to sell their game to you. Now everyone just buys it anyway. <laughs> yeah. What well, one thing I'd really like to do eventually is uh, I'd love to go on eBay and buy like a, a bundle of old demo discs and play them on stream. Oh yeah. Oh, I still have a bunch. Maybe I can send them to you. <laughs> oh, please do. 
If anyone else I still has, have a bunch. If anyone else has PlayStation 1 demo disc? Please oh, PlayStation free. 1. Oh no. Oh, PlayStation I it was 2. And 2. Oh yeah, yeah, 2. I have a bunch of 2 demo discs. Oh, this is exactly the same as in the remake as well, like the training course. Oh, same quote. The joy of going to the store and then seeing there was a new edition of the oh, PlayStation yeah. magazine. It's like, yes! Reading! <laughs> I love PlayStation magazines so much. I still got a lot of mine. Oh, I have them all. I have them all still, yeah. There we go. Noise. Uh, and if the remake is really true, there should be a gold, a big gold bolt at the top here. When once we finish. I love how the game's really quite struggling with this area because of how much is happening. Yeah, with all the flying cars and like you 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 watch this now and you think oh this is basic, but Listen back up, in the day this bold. was like oh there's. Like the environment, like the cars flying by, it's such a big world. It was, it was amazing. Oh yeah, but it is weak. Oh, remember this character as well. <laughs> she wasn't in the remake. <laughs> I wonder why. Very. If it were up to me, you would drill, drill, drill for the rest of the day. Rip this girl. I don't, I don't remember her name, but. I don't know who she is, but I love her. I love her accent. Yeah. does. And worst of all, he wants me to give you a prize for that ridiculous performance. Cool, what is it? I'm supposed to give you a This was the female counterpart so of Captain Quark, but then the robot version. Or something, right. I don't know. Not so fast. It's not very fast. Take about 3,000. <laughs> so I am going to make you pay. But that prize is ours from the captain. That's not fair. Too bad, life's not fair. You have to buy all the upgrades in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I bet Captain Quark uses stuff like this Everything all with the bolts. Time. Ha! Yeah, because the new the, the, that's what the remake like really does well. It changed the upgrade system. The two of you make me sick. Um, and it really changed it. It really made it better. Congratulations on your new Gadgetron Switch. Use it on standard Versa targets like the ones nearby. If the target is out of view. Oh. I love how the game slows down when it's just like... We can't handle this right now. Oh. On the slingshot, of course. Every game has to have their slingshot. Oh, you have to manually... Oh, wow, okay. They made that a lot easier in the remake as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus, okay. Oh, was that the same shot? Nice. Can go now. I think what these games do really good as well is because obviously you're always it's it's a pretty linear game right you're always going in like a linear path yeah where you you need to go for the game to progress but the game does a really good job at like making you kind of forget that oh the weapon switch is uh interesting l1 oh no that's center camera okay Oh, it doesn't pause the game. Weapon switching doesn't pause no. the game. Okay. <laughs> Thank Christ, they changed that in the remake. <laughs> it's weird. Having played the remake, you can definitely see where some of this just hasn't. It's, it's, it's like 
I can't say it's not aged well because it's still playable. It's been yeah. refined. That, that's the better. Yeah. Like the remake was definitely in order, but you can still play this and have a good, like, see where the inspiration came from. I don't know about the controls, obviously, but uh, like, it looks pretty decent still. Aiming is so weird because I'm just used to like auto aim. Yeah. But there's like a kind of is, but I'm not sure how quite it works. Maybe it nudges you in the direction or something. Oh, this is so fun to look at. I'm happy I went with this. It was either gonna be this or like something from even before, but I, like I just said before, if it came before this, it was gonna be like some weird point and click <laughs> kids game, which is not bad, obviously. The magic school bus. Did you have that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like the yellow school bus with the, yeah, the yeah. teacher who was taking children on dangerous expeditions for like prehistoric. Yeah. <laughs> the animation on that was also very janky. <laughs> Here's the T-Rex kids, try not to get eaten. <laughs> I think we, someone was talking about it on the last edition of this year game as well, but I really remember, remember Pajama Sam. I used to love Pajama robot, Sam. It was like no, a 2D point-and-click game. Pajama and Freddy the fish put put like this little say. purple car. <laughs> Nerd. I, I, I used to love those so games. Now that we've cleared that up, what can I do for you? Well, we saw your Infobot announcement. You were with Captain Quark. We're trying to find Captain Quark. We thought you could help us. Your logic is commendable. However, I haven't seen Captain Quark since we shot that commercial. Say, do you run on standard XP-18 sister boards? Version 7.66. Back at ya. I may be able to help you out after all. How does a helipack upgrade sound? Upgrade? Natch, since he's a 766, I could have the little guy up and flying in no time. Of course, uh, I'll just need my fee for service. <laughs> Okay, this is back. Hey, wait. Yes. Yeah, this is where you unlock the propeller, I think. Now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You the man, Clank. You're welcome. Oh yeah, you had to buy these upgrades also. You just get them yeah. in the remake. Now you just you just go to this guy and you get them for free. The you had to buy them back in the It's <laughs> like, Press oh you unlock this up, upgrade. You still have jump. to buy it though. stretch jump feature to cross this gap. While you're running, crouch using the R1 button and then jump. Oh, oh I used to think jump. that was so cool when the propeller came out of like Clang's head. <laughs> this, if I was a secret hiding person, I would say maybe secrets hiding in here. Oh, definitely. No. Aww. Nope. <laughs> just, just death. Just <laughs> the death. This was before the time of secrets. Try using the Helipax boost jump feature. It's before it. Oh, there's no collision on it. Oh, there's collision on there. <laughs> right up here. Can we get up here? Just as someone who really likes secrets, I'm, I'm gagging for a secret right now. Oh, this game was full of it. Oh, we just haven't got to the haven't got the, the quizzes. Upgrade yet. So I don't remember what it was that you had to do to unlock the Rhino. I think it was just like get a crazy amount of bolts, like one million bolts or something, I don't know. I just I just remembered there being like this type of weapon in every single game and I could never get it. Because it was always too much effort. <laughs> I wasn't a pro gamer back in back in the day. You hadn't quite achieved pro level status. Yeah, yet. yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Second Ratchet had a secret museum. Yeah, when when you complete the remake for the PS4, you also unlock a secret museum as well. So maybe that's a feature from from the second game that they kept in the remake too. I like that as well. When you finish a game, that you unlock something. Some extra, some bonuses. Yeah, I remember Sparrow 2, uh, when you complete that with like unlocking everything, you get the uh, super fire permanent upgrade. Oh, yeah. And like you can just one shot everything. I mean, at that point, you've, there's nothing left to complete in the game, so. Yeah. So it's like, alright, you've done everything here, you can be OP now because you don't really use it anymore. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Is it really janky? Yeah. Oh. That's, that's a death, folks. Oh, oh rip. <laughs> hey, we'll try and get past that bit again. Man, we should have bought the pyro thing. You were right. It's... Yeah, the pyro is OP. <laughs> Hello, Sophie. Welcome in. Hello, Sophie. Told you, pyro is OP. There she is. We got the cake. Sophie got the cake. I'm gonna stick to the grenade, I think, because the grenade's like really. The grenade's also really good. I remember the grenade carrying me throughout most of the early levels in the remake. Obviously, when I played it as a kid, I didn't play it on hard. But now, when I play the remake, no I played on the hard difficulty. It wasn't yeah. too bad as well. Oh, it's quote, a fun Minecraft server is live as well. Oh, nice. Me and Joe used to have quite an addiction to Minecraft. Oh, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe it's time to get into... Actually, I think I've still got installed it. Maybe we should give another go. Yeah. It was always fun. As you me, TLM played a lot as well back yeah. in the day. TLM, Gens. Oh, it, yeah. Actually. Everyone had their own little corner. We built our own houses. We started building a castle. Quite yeah, exciting. never got finished though. <laughs> that no. was a very ambitious project. <laughs> yeah. That was the uh, the early days of the stream as well. I think that was like Christmas time maybe. Yeah. Even before that even. It's so funny to look on on, on back on it now. You don't really talk about it like when you're streaming and you're just having like normal conversation it's not really something that comes up that easy but it's always something to like look back on what the and... kind of the early days of streaming and yeah yeah and the first kind of how everything interact. evolved you know yeah I, I was thinking this last night actually like you know you met people you know just come and hang out and Exactly, because when, like, again, when I first started, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I knew no one, I just started playing. Okay, I just, I bought a webcam, I bought a capture card, hooked it all up, and I started streaming. <laughs> I know no one, I was not in any community. I, I streamed for no one for a couple of weeks, I think, and then yeah, you start to meet new people. I, uh... I didn't even have a PC and a, a, an IMA. Uh so I couldn't stream anything really. But the one thing I did figure found out I could stream was emulated PS1 games and all right. Yeah. Games. So I actually started off as a retro streamer. I knew no one. Uh, uh, so I just started streaming from my IMA, which was painful because it just did 
did not like streaming at all. <laughs> uh, so I used to stream for two hours in the afternoon. Two hours of the evening. Uh, and I just chance upon uh, Parasite E, which I've never played, but I've heard good things. And I thought, okay, I'll give this a go. And it just so happened that obviously the Parasite E community just seemed to be very uh, dedicated and big. And that kind of got me almost to affiliate. Oh, nice. And then uh, meeting yourself and Jens. And Metal Gear Solid, I think, the original. Uh, yeah, I got affiliate within about a month. Very, very yeah. well. And then from there, and I look back on some of the stuff I've done, it's just, I don't know about you, but certainly the stuff it, yeah, I've done is crazy. Like, yeah. When you just start, you can't predict all this, right? You start and you see, you think like, all right, we'll see where it goes, right? Maybe this is something fun. Maybe this will work out. Maybe not. And, and, and I'm not doing this in the next week or so. I'm not doing it anymore. But you meet new people. You meet new friends. That's really the important thing for me. It's like, it's a whole other thing than trying to make YouTube work and just like uploading a video every week. Because you're really more connected with the people that watch your content as well. Yeah, I don't you make like genuine friends. Enjoyable for me to, yes, sir. especially if you make we speak off stream as well. But I, I yeah. think I speak to you more than people I know in real life. You know, pretty much in the Discord every day. Yeah, as much as I can. And just this idea of another planet. community is like really uh, really yeah. cool. Yeah. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Yeah, exactly. You should not underestimate Chairman Drek. He is And then it starts to grow a little and you think, all right, this is fun. This is going well. We'll, we'll just keep doing it. And now here we are, almost a year later, still doing it. where Drek is. A year and now you're talking. Less than a month for me. A year and less than it. Yeah. July 21st. Yeah, cuz I think I'm like 11 months sub now on your channel. I'm almost a full year. Crazy. Very, very crazy. I think Jens will be the first. Yeah. Year, so. uh, I'll buy the pyro before we leave. I got some nice. Free bargains for you today. I don't know, actually, I, sh I should look up the date, like the exact date when my first stream was. I, I don't know. I should it's look it up. November, Cody. Stream anniversary. Yeah, I mean, it's really weird. It's like I've been streaming a month and then. And not. You know, I've got a few people watching. And then all of a sudden, uh, I was playing Silent Hill and Konami decided to show up. Oh, uh, the was... Silent Hill streams were <laughs> yeah. crazy. <laughs> It's probably the, the craziest time this channel has ever been. Uh, you still have those VODs, right? Didn't you upload yes, them I, to your YouTube? Yeah, save the Silent Hill streams. They were quite good. First time playing some of those games as well. Well, first time playing three. Uh, and I think Silent Hill is when uh, we met a, a mutual acquaintance, IQ Barmies as well. Uh, yes. But it's been over an hour. Go back here. Pro Joe, that was Ratchet and Clank. Oh, I loved it. Last night the was pretty crazy. Amazing. I'm off uh, to speak about last night. And speaking of last night, Filthy Fridays are now an official thing. Half past six. <laughs> of course it is. Half past six on a Friday. Uh, and there's a few little things in the works to make it a special Friday show on top of video games and whatnot. Uh, Thanks, Rebel. And thanks, Snake, for having me. I'm more than happy to have you on here, finally. We, we made finally. it work. <laughs> now, now I'm, I'm off your back. I, I, won't, I won't nag you anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you for showing off Ratchet and Clank. I really enjoyed that game. Uh, it's amazing. I'm glad so you enjoyed fun. it. Really fun. It was fun. lovely to see you too, Quoty. Lovely to see all you here. And thank you again. Once again, Joe, what are you up to lately on Twitch? What what can you know? What can people find you doing over on your channel? Um, I'm really getting into variety now. I used to do 
because I stream Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. I used to do two games in the week, uh, a ge one game in the weekend and another game in the weekend. I changed that up to now do like a different game every day, but I do finish those games. So like every Tuesday it will be well, the same game, every Thursday it will be the same game, and you, Saturday you say I just you finish. Do... I, I still 4. have to finish Uncharted 4, it's just very hard, alright? <laughs> it's Thank you, just Ninja. very Thank hard. you for enjoying the episode. I really enjoyed today, as I do all the episodes lately. Next week, there will not be a This Is Your Game, I'm afraid, because I'm going away. But the week after, let me double check on my calendar. The week after is David Hoare. Ooh, nice. That's going to be a lot of fun. Very much. A very good guy. Uh, and David Hall's got a very old school point and click game, uh, which I've never, never, never played. Uh, yeah, remember to say always hard. Join the community Discord because Joe's a part of the ass team, as we know. Yep. Along with Dibby Doe and Immunity, uh, Immunity Luna, uh, Immortal Luna, <laughs> and Mopzilla, of course. And Mopzilla. Uh, a great bunch in, uh, of people. Uh, Sophie runs an anime club as well because she's in, she's like an associate of ass, an associate. <laughs> we're gonna have a turn for it. We're gonna raid out now, and we're gonna raid. Well, I never get a chance to raid this person, so I'm gonna raid him because he always shows me a lot of love. We're gonna raid Cactus Snacks. Nice. So again, thank you everyone who's shown up to the fucking. This is your game. Yes. Pro Thanks Joe. again for having me, Snake. It's this has been, been your fun. game, and your game has been Ratchet and Clank. Thank you so much for coming along, and thank you everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the VOD will be available if you want to rewatch it. I've been Snake. I'll be back Monday with more Star Wars fun and shenanigans. See you then, folks. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs>